this is an excerpt from a book, and I won't give you the name of it now, but the author is Doc Rosser, Jr. and Ellen Vaughn. So this is a quote from their book. And if I mispronounce some words, you'll understand. In September 1999, a pastor will call to sing travel to Kampong Tong province in north of Cambodia. Pastor Singh had wanted to bring the gospel to the remote villages there for years, but they had been under the control of an isolated pocket of Khmer Rouge radicals until early 1999. Now, as far as anyone knew, he was the first person to speak of Jesus in that isolated area. Most villagers cast their lot with Buddhism or ancestor worship. Christianity was unheard of. But when Singh arrived at one small rural village, the people welcomed him eagerly. They could not hear enough about the gospel. Most made decisions to commit their lives to Christ. Smiling, Pastor Singh asked the people why it seemed as if they'd been waiting him for him to come. An old woman shuffled to the front of the group, bowed, and grasped the pastor's hands. We have been waiting, she said. We have been waiting for you 20 years. And then she told him this story. After the Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia, they made their way through the countryside, destroying just about anything created with purpose and design, bridges, highways, hospitals, and human beings. It took a while, but after they had dealt with Phnom Penh and other city centers, they focused on the villages. So it was that the soldiers came to this hamlet in 1979. Their technique was the same as it had been for countless communities. But for the people who lived there, the terror was new. The communists emerged from the jungle, strode from hut to hut, ordered the villagers out. Those who resisted were killed at once, and many died in front of their homes. The rest were marched to a clearing behind the village. Their own farm tools were thrust into their hands. Now dig, the soldiers shouted. The villagers hacked the red clay soil, trembling with the dark realization they were digging their own mass grave. Some lost their nerve and tried to run. They were shot and dragged to the edge of the still shallow pit. Hours passed and the people sweated and wept and dug until finally the hole was deep enough. The people laid down their spades and shovels. The soldiers shouted for them to turn and to face the pit. They braced themselves, waiting for the killing blows, knowing that the soldiers would bludgeon them to death rather than shoot them. Why waste precious bullets on ordinary peasants? The heavy human air lay still as the villagers began to cry out, the wail before death, when the heart's longing to live becomes a desperate plea for help. They scream to Buddha, to ancestors, or to demon spirits. A few cried for their mothers. Then one woman began to cry intuitively to one of her earliest memories, the faint echo of a story told to her by her mother about the God who hung on the cross. She called out to that God. Surely the one who suffered himself might have compassion on those about to die. And time stopped. The human jungle lay still. Suddenly the screams around her became one great wail as the entire village called out as one crying to their lives for the God who hung on the cross. Then there was silence. They sobbed into the darkness of the pit before them. Silence and a flicker of hope. And then the turf people turned one by one by one. The jungle was empty and the soldiers were gone. 
And ever since that astounding day in 1979, the people of that village had been waiting, waiting for someone to come and tell them more, more about the God who hung on the cross. That's the name of the book. Wow.